this bit of festive cheer was delivered and installed by Comet. It's all good. At Lloyd's TSB, mobile banking just got better. Not only can you check your balance on the go, but now you can also pay your bills. And much, much more. Helping you stay on top of your money. Lloyd's TSB for the journey. Auto Plus Repair, Auto Plus Replace. No. The Vercor kept asking for heavy weapons. SOE kept failing to provide them for perfectly sound reason. You can manage the heavy weapons all right. SAS, for example, parachuted a six-pounder anti-tank gun with no trouble at all. What you can't manage is ammunition supply. You might get a dozen rounds in with the gun, which for SAS purposes answered. But for purposes of fighting an artillery battle, you need shells by the hundreds of tons, which you can't provide by parachute. Therefore, it was an SOE and OSS rule, nothing heavier than a bazooka. It was a stern but necessary. This was never understood at the ground end. It certainly wasn't. The Mackie kept asking for heavy artillery. Christine kept pleading to London for it, but none came. This wasn't just a pity. It turned out to be a tragedy. On the 6th of June, 1944, the long-awaited Allied invasion of France began. On the beaches of Normandy, 200,000 troops landed. To coincide with this, resistance groups across France were ordered to engage directly with the Germans to tie up their forces. Paris had been conquered. In Paris, this worked well. The city provided camouflage for the resistance to capture tanks and heavy artillery from a German army which was less interested in fighting than escaping. Perhaps the time is over for German victories. The battle is nearly over. At long last, freedom is at hand. But further away from Normandy, the Germans didn't give up anywhere near as easily. In the Vercors, they took their revenge. In the small village of Vassieux, there is a cemetery dedicated to the memory of the resistance. Here, dozens of young men are buried. Many died on a single day in 1944, the 21st of July. It was a day that would shock the world. One of the last acts in France of Nazi brutality in a brutal war. Taking his cue from the Normandy landings, the mayor of Vassieux had rashly proclaimed his own town the center of the Free Republic of Vercors. For a few days, it seemed he might get away with it, and Vercors would follow Paris and become part of the new Free France. Instead, it became the place for the Nazis to strike back in what became known as the Battle of Vercors. Actually, it wasn't so much a battle. It was a massacre. The people of the Vercors expected the Allies to parachute in and help them rid themselves of the Germans. What they got instead was the SS. The Germans didn't do much about it for a bit, but eventually, in July, 
diverted several thousand men and a squadron of SS Gliderborn expert killers and cleaned up the Falcon in ghastly circumstances, raping most of the women and shooting most of the men, wounded included. The tragic thing is, as the planes flew in, the partisans, the, the, uh, the uh, resistance workers on the ground, saw these planes in the skies, thought the Allies have come, and then the parachutes start to deploy. And they think, great, you know, these are British parachutists, and the gliders come in. And of course they weren't. These were German paratroopers and German gliders. And the, part and the, the partisans were caught completely off their guard. And there was a level of brutality which was quite appalling in the fighting in their corps. I mean, dreadful things happened and uh, terrible acts of brutality. The SS even discovered the resistance's secret hospital in a cave deep in the Verkor forest. The nurses, doctors and patients who could walk were deported to concentration camps. The rest were shot. Watching the battle with Francis Kamertz was Christine. When it was clear that there was no help coming to the resistance and the Verkor couldn't be held, she and Kamertz were advised to leave as they were needed for vital work elsewhere. And Kamertz said to himself, this is an important battle, but it's not a decisive one. I have larger responsibilities, I must get out. And he and Christine escaped from the Verkor in a 72-hour march practically without stopping, got away. And Francis went back to his job, commanding all resistance forces east of the road. But soon he would need Christine's help again, this time to save his life. For two years, Kamertz had traveled thousands of miles across the occupied south of France without hindrance. Even though there was a price on his head and he was stopped many times by the local police, his disguise held up. Now his luck ran out. On August the 13th, 1944, just two days before the Allied invasion of southern France, he was traveling with two other British agents when he was stopped at a routine roadblock and recognized by an observant policeman. A rather sharper eyed than policeman than usual noticed that he stood six foot four and remembered there was a man six foot four high on the wanted list and said, you better stay, mate. And took him off to prison. The three men were arrested and held in a small town. They looked likely to be tortured and were certainly going to be shot. 